Hey guys, Tarantula Sam here, and welcome to my channel. Before we get started, you may have noticed I put together an introduction and a logo, and I wanted to get your guys' feedback on that. Do you like it? Do you not? Is it too long, too short? Um, whatever. Uh, give me your feedback in the comments, and uh, I'll think about it and decide whether or not I'm going to change it, keep it, or toss it. Anyways, jumping into the video, um, for this video, I wanted to take the opportunity to talk about uh, tarantulas and pre-molt. I happen to have a great example of one right now. This video is going to be geared more towards beginners um, who haven't experienced a lot of molting in their tarantulas yet. Um, I've got a great example of an Acanthus gurea geniculata that is in heavy, heavy pre-molt. So uh, I'll go ahead and uh, get the camera switched over and show you what she looks like and uh, I'll just talk about some of the telltale signs that a tarantula will be molting soon. All right, guys, so this is my Acanthus curia geniculata. We named her Bellatrix, but we usually just call her Genic for short. She is a sub-adult female, and she's about five and a half inches right now, and I understand they get up to about eight, so she will be a big girl. Um, anyways, so for this video, I wanted to talk about uh, tarantulas in pre-molt because she is a stellar example of a tarantula in heavy pre-molt. For those of you who keep spiders, you would have been able to spot this uh, immediately as soon as I turn the camera to her. And for those of you who don't keep spiders or are new to this, um, you can probably tell pretty quickly that she is very fat. So um, I want to talk about just the telltale signs of pre-molt. Uh, so you people who are new to keeping spiders will know when your tarantula is about to molt. Um, so I'm going to divide this into kind of two categories. One, the uh, physical attributes, and two, the uh, kind of... Uh, behavioral characteristics. Um, and this may vary a bit from spider to spider. Um, uh, this will be probably more accurate here to these heavy terrestrials. Um, but uh, so first, uh, about the physical attributes, um, you can tell that she is very heavy. So they'll put on a lot of weight generally uh, before they molt. Uh, their abdomen will be quite large uh, and also start looking really dingy. You can tell she looks pretty dingy. Um, her hair is starting to look patchy, and she's not a big kicker either, so she didn't have a bald spot before, but her hair is kind of starting to, to spread a little bit uh, because there's the tension uh, underneath, and it's also starting to darken quite a bit. You can kind of see, um, if you will, I'll try pointing without touching her because I don't really want to disturb her too much, but right in that area right there, it's looking really dark. And that'll get even darker, almost black, uh, when she's right about to molt. Additionally, with some tarantulas, um, they'll start to look uh, pretty dingy as far as uh, their hygiene goes. Um, some tarantulas are just dirty. And this is getting into the, the behavioral uh, aspects. Um, they get pretty lethargic. Uh, they don't move around as much. Not that they move around a lot anyway, but uh, they really just start to act slower. Um, and some of mine I've noticed stop grooming themselves, like this Acanthus geniculata. You can tell she's got bits of substrate and cocoa fiber there in her uh, hair and her abdomen. She's generally pretty picky about picking that out. Um, the other big telltale sign is when they stop eating, they go into a fast before they molt. Um, and that is especially true when these Acanthus geniculatas uh, refuse food. Um, these spiders have been called trash compactors. I've recently seen them uh, called the murderous on arachna boards. They are always hungry and always looking to take something down. So I'll show you right now that she's just not interested at all, which is very not characteristic of an Acanthus geniculata. Um, once she molts, I'll show you. That would have been an immediate takedown. But I'm going to get that out before it burrows. And so it doesn't bugger too much. Um, so yeah, once they start refusing, uh, uh, feeders, that's usually a sign that they're going to molt soon. The other thing is, uh, they will start to lay down a molt mat once they get close to, uh, molting. In fact, once they've laid down a molt mat, you're usually within hours, uh, of, of them molting. Um, some spiders, uh, like this Acanthus scurry geniculata, what she will do is, uh, um, kind of kick off her urticating hairs and make kind of a perimeter. Um, I've noticed she did that last time at least. Uh, we'll see if uh, she does that again this time. 
but uh, I expect that she will be molting here uh, in the next month for sure. I'll be shocked if she makes it further than that. And uh, then I will do an update video for you guys with her uh, pretty new bright colors. And we'll see how big she's grown. Anyways, so I hope this video was insightful to you guys. And uh, if you like these kind of videos, uh, I try to upload every once in a while. I've been uploading fairly frequently as of recent. I'm trying to save my YouTube partnership here. Um, I've got uh, some watch time hours I have to make up under their new policy. But uh, anyways, if you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed yet and you're interested, uh, I invite you to subscribe, and I'll talk to you later.